Hey, this is Dr. K from iMedical School, here to talk about iron deficiency anemia. Make sure to check out our other medical videos at iMedical School for all your educational needs. All right, let's begin by talking about iron deficiency anemia. We previously talked generally about anemia. Anemia is split into three categories based on the mean cell volume. Mean cell volume, otherwise known as MCV, is a representation of the average size of red blood cells. We divide anemia into causes that lead to a microcytic anemia, normocytic anemia, and a macrocytic anemia. A microcytic anemia is defined as an MCV less than 80, normocytic from 80 to 100, and macrocytic with an MCV greater than 100. The causes of a microcytic anemia include sideroblastic anemia, iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia, and anemia of chronic disease. Today we'll focus on iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is when the body does not have enough iron to produce red blood cells. The body becomes deficient in iron due to a lack of iron in the diet, poor absorption, or bleeding. To understand iron deficiency anemia, we need to understand how iron is absorbed and regulated in the body. Iron enters through our diet and is absorbed in the small intestine, specifically in the duodenum. Dietary iron is the, in the ferric 3 plus state and is converted to the ferrous 2 plus state. A transporter called the divalent metal transporter 1 or DMT1 shuttles the ferrous ion from the duodenum into the cell. Within the enterocyte, which is a cell that lines the duodenum, ferroportin on the basal side of the enterocyte shuttles the ferrous iron into the bloodstream. On the other hand, if your body has enough iron, the ferrous iron is bound to ferritin and it remains within the enterocyte. If the iron bound to ferritin is not utilized, it will eventually be lost when the enterocyte completes its natural life cycle and dies. Hepcidin is the main regulator of iron absorption within the body. Iron is stored in the body within specialized cells in the liver called Kupfer cells. When iron stores are full, Hepcidin is released by liver cells called hepatocytes. Hepcidin binds to the ferroportin transporter and downregulates its activities. As a result, iron remains in the enterocytes and is not absorbed into the body. Keep in mind that inflammation can also trigger hepcidin release, preventing iron utilization in times of significant inflammation. Now that we understand the basic process of iron absorption, let's talk about iron deficiency anemia. As you stated before, iron deficiency anemia occurs through poor iron in the diet, poor absorption, or blood loss, as blood contains a significant amount of iron. Iron deficiency due to a diet alone is extremely rare in the U.S., but is seen in other countries where resources may be scarce and may be seen with vegetarians who have a less readily available source of iron in their diet. Iron deficiency anemia can also be due to absorption issues. A common absorptive problem of iron deficiency anemia is celiac disease. Celiac disease is an immune-mediated response to gluten in the diet that causes a destruction of the absorptive surface of the small bowel. The loss of the absorptive surface prevents iron absorption. We can diagnose celiac disease by obtaining an IgA and IgG tissue transglutaminase levels with total IgA levels, as well as doing an upper endoscopy with duodenal biopsies. The treatment of celiac disease is a gluten-free diet. Watch our video on celiac disease to learn more, but another reason for a poor iron absorption is due to ga gastric bypass surgery. In a gastric bypass, a small portion of the stomach is routed to the jejunum, and the rest of the stomach and duodenum is attached farther down the digestive pathway. As a result of this bypass, food does not pass the duodenum, leading to poor iron absorption. It's important that patients with gastric bypasses be supplemented with vitamins such as iron and B12 to prevent deficiencies. The last and most important cause of iron deficiency anemia is blood loss. Blood loss can be overt, meaning you can see the blood, or occult, too small to be seen. In any male patient who presents with iron deficiency anemia, a workup for gastrointestinal blood loss must be obtained. The workup includes an upper endoscopy and a colonoscopy. The reason is that iron deficiency anemia in a male is considered to be colon cancer until proven otherwise, as colon cancer can cause occult blood loss. 
This blood loss may come from other etiologies like AVMs, which are malformed vessels that occur commonly as we age. But colon cancer must be ruled out. In females with iron deficiency anemia, the concern for gastrointestinal blood loss is important, but menstrual bleeding is another common source for blood loss. This is why a gynecological history is very important when evaluating a patient for iron deficiency anemia. Now, how do we diagnose iron deficiency anemia? Well, we diagnose iron deficiency anemia with iron studies. Iron studies consist of blood tests for ferritin, iron, TIBC, otherwise known as total iron binding capacity, transferrin, and iron saturation. Let's talk about what these labs are. Ferritin is a storage form of iron, and ferritin will generally be low in iron deficiency anemia, usually less than 100 when there are inadequate iron stores available. Iron levels represent the iron levels in the blood and should be low in iron deficiency anemia. Transferrin is a protein that allows for the transport of iron through the body. When the body is low on iron, the transferrin will increase to aid the transport of iron. TIBC, or total iron binding capacity, measures how many available binding spots are available to bind iron for transport. In iron deficiency anemia, there should be a lot of spots available, making TIBC high in iron deficiency anemia. Transferrin saturation, otherwise known as iron saturation, is the ratio of the serum iron to the total iron binding capacity. Thus, if TIBC is high in iron deficiency and serum iron is low, we would expect the transferrin saturation to be low in iron deficiency anemia. In a future video, we will talk about anemia of chronic disease and how to interpret iron studies to diagnose anemia of chronic disease. Well, that was a brief review of iron deficiency anemia. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to give the video a like, share this video with your friends and classmates, comment with any questions, and most importantly, subscribe. This is Dr. K from iMedical School, and I'll see you next time.